as I mentioned already, on the, uh, the Friends Forever, um, Sakirati Enutum Bhakti, Work in Progress. Mm. And uh, reading from the section that is uh, a retelling of the Sagaras Leelas of the Bhagavatam, beginning with the 12th chapter of the 10th canto. Orune Rage, Pindar Upare, Shunga, Pajhai Balaram, Bhaire, Bhaire, Dhak, Dhaki, Gojana Tolaya. Tamate Gagane Udaya Samane Samaye Navida Nirada Jena Vichitra Shayane Gokula Nandana Santushta Kore Shayan Yashoda Vadane Sinchi Jala Tiyo Mukera Sondaya Priya Bhattu Narma Shaka Krishna Koranadi Thake Jagai Boliya Upta Are Kana Tomara Nayana Kuliya Guna Jagiya Sakala Gopala Vane Jati Chai Esho Amadiru Priya Deko Ki Sundara Arunima Kale Kale Sevaka Seva Ishwa Jagathera Bhandu Ahamkara Kata Nitai Sachi Nandan Bhai एक काना बालाए एक का संगे चाहे बने बने सारा दिन जब वो को पार्टने जमुना पुरी ने को सेवने चिंता ही हार आमंगो बंदा आमारा जुगरा कुपी नायन बिराम चौके आशुहीन खांडी खांडी बाले कवि इतो भगवान Before the new sun on a raised platform, Balaram blows his horn. At the call, Bhaire, the cowards rise and Sham sleeps on. Like a fresh rain cloud in the coppery dawn sky, the joy of Goku lies content on a colorful bed. His shoulders sprinkles his face with water drinking the beauty of his visage. The young Brahman, Madhulunga, Krishna's dear friend, shakes his hand, wakes him, saying, Hey, get up, Khan. Open your eyes. Quit your sleeping. All the cowards want to go to the forest. Come, dear friend of ours. Behold how beautiful in the glow of dawn our Sevaka. Excuse me. All the cowards want to go to the forest, come, dear friend of ours. Behold, how beautiful in the glow of dawn are Sevaka and Savior Bhagawan. Friends to everyone, false ego gone, the blessings of Nithai Sachinandan. O Kanai and Balai, let's all go together to the forest. Let's, I should say, let's all go together from forest to forest all day long. We'll go to Gopardan and Jamuna. Carefree and go save Hey Ram, Haram, Govinda, my dear divine couple, apple of the Gopi's eyes. My eyes are devoid of, devoid of tears, but I cry. When will that day be mine? The daylight hours in the life of Ram and Krishna's coward friends begin with the sound of Balaram's horn. Ram glowing like a confident full moon that never fades, even as the night ends, stands on a raised platform against the copper sky just before the sun peaks above the horizon. Surya, that is, waits for Ram to herald the new day as the sound of Ram's horn calls the cowards to assemble in endless dreams, longing for cowarding throughout the forest of Brudge come true. In Brudge, there is waking and dreaming consciousness, but no dreamless sleep. 
and therein waking and dreaming manifests not unto, themse unto themselves, nor within the fourth all-encompassing dimension of consciousness, Turiya, but rather in the fifth dimension, Turiyatita Gopala. So it says the Gopal Tapanishruti, but I digress. The merciful Srimad Bhagavatam opens the lotus of its Sakurati center in the twelfth chapter of its tenth canto at daybreak on a special day during the final sequence of the coward's childhood, Sesh Kumar. Friendship begins at this age, an age centered on friends rather than on parents, just as romantic feelings begin at puberty as one's lover becomes one's center rather than one's friends. In this section of the Bhagavad, Sakirati bursts blooms and blossoms with unequaled enthusiasm as it takes center stage. Plans were made with great excitement the night before to rise and depart early for the forest. Taking their breakfast with them, Krishna and his friends planned a picnic. As such, it is a wonder that on this night they slept at all. Krishna rose uncharacteristically early without being called by his mother who was busy preparing the picnic, brunch, the picnic brunch. He then accomplished two tasks at once with the sweet sound of his horn, not waiting for Balaram, its vibration causing ripples in undifferentiated Brahman. The two tasks, he personally woke the calves and signaled for his friends to come to Nanda's courtyard. the opening section of this uh, section of the little narrative, just a few paragraphs, give you a sense of the spirit of how this section is uh, being written. And um, this again is the uh, Sakura's center of the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. It's the beginning of the narrative of the Agasur Lila. And as mentioned here, uh, at this age, Krishna is in the final, final portion, Sesh, final, means final, of his Kumar Lila. And at this time, he's been allowed to herd the calves. Mm -hmm allowed to herd the calves. The statement itself uh, brings to light the tension between Vatsalya and, um, and Sakyabhav that is very uh, touching and um, highlighted in, in this uh, narrative, as it is throughout all the Goswamis, Lila Grantas, with regard to Krishna's departing for the forest every day, that means to say that the Vatsalya sentiment wants to keep him at home, and the Sakyaras sentiment wants to take him out and get away from the parents, and then be free from being overseen and restricted by the protective I at an age when they feel there's no need of protection. They're, they're, they're on their own two feet, they can run now. <laughs> they're no longer crawling, right? And dependent, they can dress themselves before they fight with their, with, their, with their mothers to some extent when they try to dress them. Not really opposed as much to that, but with the eagerness to, to burst out uh, into, the, uh, into the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. Typically, as is mentioned here, at the onset, uh, through the Bengali uh, poems, a poem song we sing every day in the morning at, uh, in Madhava, Pradhaji Gopal. <clears throat> um, typically, 
to the sound of Balaram's horn. The way this Lila begins in the Bhagavad, however, it's a special day, and Krishna is rising before Balaram and blowing his horn. Um, but uh, at any rate, the calling of the cowherds from their own homes to the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj is a, a, uh, a daily affair. And it is that sound of the horn that is uh, uh, nourishing and causing to flourish their their style of of Sakurati, such that, as I say, they want to get out of the clutches of their their mothers and uh, into the courtyard of Nanda Marsha. There's uh, quite a bit of attention. And with regard to the uh, uh, Leela itself that's been described, this particular day that uh, characterizes this period in Krishna's life, um, it's uh, uh, especially so, the tension between Sakya and uh, and Batsali, because Krishna is just beginning now as a cowherd, uh, and not even as a cowherd, but as a, a calf herder. This is beautifully uh, described in in the work of uh, Gopal Champo of Jiva Goswami, mm -hmm. and um, he depicts Krishna there as for some reason, unbeknown to Nanda Maharaj, Krishna and Balaram, avoiding his father. Mm -hmm. And calling on his father at times that just previously he would call on his mother. Mm -hmm. Now he's calling on his father. Mm -hmm. and more aware of himself and his boyhood and so forth and then he begins to avoid his father and instead he's found to be hanging out with his uncles they all have Batsali Rasa with, with him but the intensity of the Batsali Rasa goes from Nanda to or excuse me, Yashoda to Rohini to Nanda Maharaj then Upananda and uh, the other brothers and so forth so um, they, the elders, the uncles, are very much pleased to have Krishna's company on a more regular basis in these early days as his, he's moving from childhood to boyhood because they don't get as much of an opportunity. Hmm? And the reason that they're getting the opportunity is because he has something on his mind that it would be difficult to bring up to his parents, but the uncles, so happy to have his association, they're willing to entertain the thought. And the thought, of course, is that I want to herd cows. So, as I said before, Krishna has three identities in Braj. He is the son of Yashoda. This is one identity. And this is centered on the Kumar Leela. And then he has another identity, it is, he's a coward. And the third identity, he's the lover of the gopis. The Bhagavatam is showcasing these three different mindsets of Krishna, or said in another way, different, um, different modes of affection that, that uh, speaking from the point of view of the ashraya laman, of the vessel of love, the devotees, mm -hmm. that he, as the object of love, corresponds with. Mm -hmm. So, you can imagine, just like uh, in, in postmodern movies, it was popular to uh, take a subject and then look at it through the lens of different people. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, the, 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 the drama of Krishna Lila is being viewed through different lenses, through the Dasiras, Sakiras, Vatsaliras, Manduras, and Krishna's appearing slightly differently. And as I said earlier, different qualities of his many 
64 qualities, and I see the Bhagavad Goswami, Tita Goswami cites even more in Krishna Sandarva, but um, certain qualities will be stand out more to one rasa than to another. And so, um, so um, in his, it, he's just at this point now, he's transforming from Kumar to Pauganda. Although Pauganda is, is the central age for Sakyarasa, as I said earlier, the lens through which he's viewed in Sakyarasa extends down to the final portion of the Seish, uh, Seish of Kumar, the, of the childhood age, which is being described here in Agasur Leela. And to the beginning of his, of his Kishore age, or the, really the middle, in the middle of his Poganda, the, the adolescent tendencies in terms of his romanticism begin to uh, make ingress into his uh, boyhood. And of course, their uh, uh, love for him relative to his, to, relative to his age extends uh, well into Kishore, especially for those boys who have um, service to the divine couple, Radha and Krishna, Priyanarma Sakas. So it's a beautiful uh, um, uh, thought um, because the romantic sentiment is focused exclusively on Krishna's Kishore Leela. The Vatsalya sentiment is focused exclusively on Krishna's Kumar Leela. But in Sakharas, we appreciate, we focused on all the ages, <laughs> you can say. Down to Sakya, as Prabhupada said, Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam, Nanda Gopa Pujara Krishna, Yan Mitram Paramananda, Sum. Purna Brahma Sanatan. So it is pervaded by, by Sakya Rasa. Um, another way, of course, to talk about it is the fact that, as I said, in, when the Sakya Rasa is bundled, with Vatsalya, then it's bundled with Sakya, uh, with, uh, with with sometimes with with Dasya, and it's also another group mixed with Madhurya. So it's 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 uh, present throughout the entirety of the sentiments that make up the Brajali. The Dasaras, of course, is also there, but in ninety nine percent of the cases, the dasiras is, is tinged by sakya. You have sakya tinged by dasya and, and, and sakya and dasya bundled with, with, uh, with sakya. In, in the case where the, the latter, the, the, the dasya is prominent. So, it's, it's, uh, um, you can't get away from sakya rasa in brudge, is the point. These are the kind of things that those who uh, have this ideal comes to their mind. They find ways <laughs> to, 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 to uh, uh, emphasize the speciality, mm -hmm. the extraordinariness, the bestness of their own sentiment. This is the subjective reality. Twice in Chaitanya Charitamrita, where uh, Mahasaya Krishna's Kaviraj Kasami makes his case from his Madhurya Rasa vantage point that Shringa Rasa, the Romantic Rasa, is the best and therefore we call it Madhurya, he says, sweet. So he's, from the point of view of Rasa Vichar, trying to be objective, but speaking from his own <laughs> uh, perspective at the, at the same time, well, a good bit objective case can be made Obviously, for the, uh, the fullness of the uh, of the Madhurya Rasa, um, and he's making it and making it from his own um, heart's felt uh, uh, experience and so forth. Nonetheless, each time he does it twice, he steps back for a moment and, a, and, and underscores the the reality of the subjective. Um, perspective, the, the supremacy, I should say, 
of the subjective perspective within the brunch. That means he says, but for each devotee, hmm, their sentiment is the best. Objectively, we could say, Madhuri Rasa is the highest. But that, and Sanatana Goswami makes this point in Brihad Bhagavatamrita beautifully. He says, but this is really only for the material world. <laughs> That's only for, or for like teaching about it. Because that sensibility that one is best, each one thinks theirs is absolutely the best without dismissing any other one. They just think, I'm just so fortunate. My relationship with Krishna is like this, and it's the best, and their subjective uh, immersion in that causes them to see it and find ways to explain it if you wanted to, to talk to them. But the point is that they're all the best, and they're really all the best. But for teaching, then there's some, make, make some, after all, to teach, you have to step back and be objective. This is the hallmark of academia, right? Like science. And uh, uh, to be in, in, in academia, you have to be objective. A fellow told me that, or he made a point that, the, that the, in Kali Yuga, the, 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 the present time, the PhD is the Danda. <laughs> because with the PhD, then people will listen to you. And the point of having the Danda is that, with know, the people previous times, is that people would take notice of you and listen to you. Hmm? I didn't agree with him, actually. <laughs> He was a house owner, <laughs> he was a, and he was an academic, a PhD. And my thought was, with a PhD, the very heart of what it means to be a sannyasin, in terms of a sannyasi ministering to the public and teaching, is absent because you, you cannot express your heart in the academic world. You have to put it, put it, put it, close it down. You can't, you have to be objective to the material. You can't be subjectively plugged into it or it loses its, its dryness, <laughs> <laughs> its staleness, and so forth. It, it, it's, it's, it's like tr trying to like bring it all down to one, to one dimension, mm -hmm. and take the heart out of it and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's a very restrictive position, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, at any rate, um, yes, so, what was the point? So, uh, with feeling, mm -hmm. Uh, the feeling rules. It's a heart over, over mind, uh, heart over intellect. I often say we should we have to learn how to use our 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 head to do what? Soften our heart. To soften our heart. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. This is the place of the head in in the culture of bhakti rasa. Use the head to soften the heart. So in Braj, or in the Paravyom, everyone feels, and everyone is right, that their sentiment is, is, is the best. Mm -hmm. So this is just like one of the ways you might hear someone in Sakyarasa making the case. And Sakyarasa touches all the rest. Krishna is, 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 is the son of Rishoda, he's, a, he's, the, he's the coward boy, he's a, the lover of Radha, and, and in all of these situations, we have our opportunity to participate. Poor gopis, we only have Krishna and Kishore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can they? How can they express their romantic sentiments until he's become a Kishore? Mm -hmm. In the Prakat Leela, the Manifest Leela, it's it's there, but it can't come out until the, the sequence 
of the Leela plays out. They become a beige, and Krishna becomes a beige, and so forth. Meanwhile, he's just getting up off of his off of his hands and knees and just starting to walk and immediately wants to herd cows. So anyway, an arrangement is made and so, so that, that he can herd the calves. He's hanging out, Krishna and Balaram, with his uncles and his father starts to become suspicious. Why is he spending all of his spare time with his uncles now instead of with us? So he approaches his brothers, Nana and Raj, to kind of ask what's up. Of course, they know what's up, and they've been entertaining the ambition of Krishna that he felt comfortable to share with them because they're so overwhelmed by the opportunity to spend more time with him that they're ready, ready to, um, to, to entertain it and encourage him in it in ways that his father is not, certainly his mother is not ready to entertain him, the, 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 those, those thoughts. That he will go to the forest all day long with big cows from, from early morn until the sun begins to set. It's just, it's just there's no place in her mind whatsoever that, that, that he's ever going to be, be older than, than uh, grow out of his, his, his Kumar age. Of course, I should mention in this with regard to the ages that the that in 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 uh, uh, in the excellences of each of the ages, the excellences of the Kumar age are carried into the Poganda age, and the excellence of those two ages are carried into the. The Kishore age. That's why it said the Kishore age is the fullest. But it's not, although there's some difference of opinion. Kavi Karnapur likes to think that only only the Kishore age is manifest in the Parvyom. But Sanatan, Jiva Goswami, uh, Rupa Goswami, um, Later, probably the Jerusalem, all see it differently. That each of these ages are, and the Leelas relative to them, relative to them um, that, ex, that are played out during those periods, are all available within the Paravyam, within Golok. They're like Prakash, is the word used. They're like a, like a, like a section, like, like windows. Here, you see, you know, when the Leela manifests in this world, it's more like the way things play out in this world. You grow up, you change, you're a, you leave your childhood behind, it's just there in pictures, but it's gone. You're supposed to be not be bewildered by that. There's the changing of ages, of bodies, so to speak. And once you, once you've, you know, if there's a song, and the ponies go up and down, and what's that that go? Can't, can't look back. We can't go back. We can't return. We can only. Oh, I can't remember that. So it's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. And the seasons go round and round, and the painted, it's about a carousel. Painted ponies go up and down, and the kids are riding on them. Mm -hmm. and, and we can't return, we can only look behind from where we've come and go round and round. Mm -hmm. So, Johnny Mitchell's song. Oh, we can't return. We can look back from where we've come and, and go forward. So this is the material life, right? Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> but um, so when the Leela from the Par of Yom comes here and plays out, it's much more similar to, to our lives mm -hmm. and more kind of linear, if you will, in the way it expresses itself. 
Whereas in the Prakat Leela, every moment of every Leela is accessible. Hmm? And some devotees may live, live in, 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 in one moment of one Leela. Um, we can ask him if we're bold enough. Bopananda Bon, bon Maharaj is coming in his, his guru, Bhakti Hridai Bon Maharaj, who was a god brother of Prabhupada. I was told many, many years ago at his moth in the Madan Gopal, um, Madan Mohan in, uh, in Braj, in Vrindavan, that Bon Maharaj saw himself as entering the Leela at, in the, during the Brahma Muhurta. In 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 uh, um, Gopi Deha, Manjari Deha, and always remaining in that lila, that one lila, the waking of Krishna, Radha and Krishna, that dawn as the peacocks cry and the parrots speak and so forth. Mm -hmm. Whether that's accurate or not, I'm not sure. But uh, what everybody, whether he said it. But the point is that the possibility exists. Do you understand? That's why I was saying before. Sounds like if you hear too much about the prak uppercut lila, which not too much is said about, but it, it seems like the people aren't whole. Hmm? Kind of, they have a part here, and maybe it doesn't play out anywhere else. Or, and only a certain aspect of of, a, of what might be an entire personality, as we see it here, will be their, their entire personality hmm? in that forever. And, it, and it's, point being, never, and, and, and it's never, they never tire of that. Hmm? Not going to be the case for everyone, but the point is that, the, that every section of the Leela, every, every Prakash is available to participate in. Hmm? Uh, all at once. Um, something like we see in the Dwarka Leela of Krishna. When Krishna went to Dwarka, and Nara was in Dwarka, and, 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 he, and he went to see Krishna, and Krishna was getting married to the queens, and he went into one palace, and there was Krishna, marriage with Rukmini, and then he went to the next palace and there he was marrying Satyabhama in each palace. At the same time all of these Prakashas were going on, each one different. Every time Narada would come in, Krishna would say, oh, Narada's here. <laughs> so so uh, this is a, 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 a sample of that. Um, so, uh, anyway, the, the uncles of Krishna relishing the opportunity to have his uh, association on a more regular basis for a few weeks uh, and they're uh, securing that. They're securing that uh, uh, Vatsalya opportunity by way of um, uh, uh, cons consent, mm -hmm. consenting to his yes, Yes, you should be a, a, a cowherder. We understand. We'll have to talk to your father for you. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So Nanamur kind of sees this. What's happening? Why are they spending more time there? Hmm? Krishna and Balram. So he, he goes amongst them and he says, Okay, boy, what's up? <laughs> and then, then they come up with it, of course. Krishna wants to herd the cows. He's thinking, what? He's only like not even five years old yet. Of course, you know, Krishna has a special quality of one of those boys who's mature for his age. So, what a younger boy might do, what might be more of a duty or activity of an elderly, an older boy, he does it at a younger age. He, I mean, he's, as I said, in the middle of his boyhood, he's ro ro romancing secretly, even on the head of Kaliya, as he dances there. He's not really chastising Kaliya. This is a whole other perspective, from the internal perspective 
of what really happened, the primal cause. There are so many secondary causes. Hmm? The primary cause is he, he wants to show off his dancing ability. Because <laughs> gopis will come there, he finds a reason. That's why he's so eager to go up. And he's just young, he's only, that's his pogana leader. Hmm? He, he wants, if he does something like that, chastise the Kaliya, everyone will come. Hmm? Gopis will come. You'll see him dance. They'll be attractive. Hmm? So, anyway, he's mature for his age. Hmm? So the, the uncles of Krishna are consenting and then, then, then revealing to Nanda Maharaj what, what, what's up. And then he then, of course, is convinced by them. He's a man. He has, he has to take it. <laughs> and now he has the task of going and somehow convincing Krishna's mother <laughs> Krishna should be allowed. This is his, this is his dharma. Hmm? Uh, this comes up a little bit later in the, in the narrative here. Um, that, 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 that Krishna is a coward. We can't say it enough times. Krishna is, was, and always will be a coward. Krishna is a coward. This is his nature. Can't be changed. Um, so, as it's becoming apparent, then it has to be accepted. And Madhuri so it has to be convinced and so forth. So, there's some type of uh, uh, giving in slightly that all right well if he's got to herd if he got to herd cows cows let him herd the calves who will stay nearby and so on and so forth so this is where we are in the Bhagavad and Krishna is in this last stage of his Kumar Leela and he's herding calves and they're planning the night before to have a picnic lunch and because of that uh, some irregularity. That means to say, as I say, typically Balaram is rising and blowing his buffalo horn and all the cowards are hearing that, rising up and racing out to come to the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj to meet Krishna, to wake up Krishna, to meet Balaram and prepare for the day. Hmm. Mentioned here in the poetry is the fact that they're dreaming all night long about this. So the sound of the horn is like, dream, is the dream is coming true. Hmm? What they've been dreaming all night of roaming in the forest with the cows, with Krishna and Balaram, is now coming true. They're waking to their dreams come true. Hmm? Every morning, typically Balaram stands on a raised platform and bugles to all of them. Meanwhile, Krishna is still sleeping, especially as time goes on and his evening exploits um, kept him up the better part of the night, so it's difficult for him to wake as early. Mm -hmm. So, this is an exception. That means to say that while there's the typical day in the life of Krishna, mm -hmm. there's much nuance and room for uh, within that outline, if you will, uh, variety by the influence of Leela Shakti, who's like the shadow of Krishna, following and anticipating um, what, may be, what may be required for the Leela and arranging for it to happen. Now, this dreaming I mentioned here in the, in, in the text, it's thought of that Krishna Leela in Braj is a 24-hour affair that devotees participate in. Sometimes it's described like this, 24 hours, 24-7, I should say, <laughs> something like that. It's a 24-7 leela. That means that there are other leelas of Bhagavan that aren't 24-7 in terms of participation on the part of all the devotees. So as you move from the Braj leela all the way to Mahavishnu, for example, and the Shristi Leela. 
this Mahavishnu, at least half the time, he's sleeping. <laughs> right? And half the time he's, he's awake and so is the world, and then he says, I better go back to sleep. <laughs> Try again. He gets some inspiration in his own dream. Wake up from deep sleep, susupti, to, to uh, swapna, to jagrat, to waking. So there's a, there's a contrast in the spectrum between Mahavishnu and Krishna, who the latter uh, practically He's never sleeping. Time to sleep. He's out the window, and and uh, just as he just starts to doze off, in the powers with Radha, the birds are to get back at home before the sun comes up. Hmm? Balaram is rising and blowing the horn, typically before the sun comes up. Hmm? Surya is waiting. For the order of Ram, the coast is clear. You can come up now. <laughs> Krishna's home. He got. He made it home hmm? without getting caught in his romantic exploits. So the sun is a little timid to come up. The sky is a little copper, but hmm, cautious. It's a cautious sun. Is it clear? Uh, when he hears the horn of Balaram, okay. I can, I can rise now, and the day will start, and, and I will facilitate this, uh, these other sentiments, and particularly the day-long sentiment of cowherding throughout the forests of, of, of Braj. Hmm? So in the Braj, we, should, we might think there's no sleeping, but this would seem to pertain only to Madhurya Rasa, right? Because the cowards go to bed at night. So we have to admit there's dreaming there, but there's no deep, dreamless sleep, susupti. That doesn't happen. Hmm? So in their dreams, then, they're cowarding with Krishna. There's a beautiful anecdote that I'll. Um, share with you. I had the fortune to speak uh, with the Mahant at uh, Mangala Lihi in West Bengal, where the lineage of um, Sundarananda, Sundarananda, I think his name, yeah, Sundarananda, who is an associate of Nityananda, one of the Dwarasa Gopals, the 12 associates of Krishna Balaram appearing in Gaur Leela. And he is uh, um, Sudama, Krishna's friend in Braj, Sudama in Braj. He has a Sudama also in 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 two, a couple of them. He has one in Mathura and one in in um, Ujjain. Hmm? He goes to Dwarka also, Sudamas. Hmm? In fact, the flower, just as a as an aside, the flower, the florist in Mathura. When, 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 the, when Krishna went to Mathura in the Prakat Lila, of course, the gopis had remained behind, Nanda Maharaj went, but Krishna's friends also went with him you know, to the wrestling match. And as you know, they're going through, the, through Mathura and they're meeting different people, one of whom was the florist. There was also the tailor, right? The tailor, the king's tailor, who was bringing the clean, was it the tailor or washerman? Washerman, bringing the bringing the the, the, the king's clothes, and Krishna stopped him and said, "I think I should wear that." Mm -hmm. This is this is one of the anubhavs of Sakirasa to play like kings, mm -hmm. amongst the uh, the, 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 the the friends of Krishna. Here they were actually wearing the king's ornaments. Of course, Krishna is the, is the king of kings, the king of rasa. So uh, the washerman, or yeah, the washerman, he was unwilling to adorn Krishna with Kamsa's uh, royal vestments and so forth. And it didn't work out that well for, um, <laughs> for the washerman. <laughs> Meanwhile, the florist, the florist Sudama, was very happy to 
the garlands that he had been making, ostensibly for the king, he was very happy to give to Krishna in Balaram. And Krishna was very happy to give him full sakirasa and turn him into a coward right before in front of everyone's eyes. Because just hearing his name, hmm, Sudama, this Sudama was a florist living in Mathura, but he would go to the outskirts of Mathura where the, where the metropolitan area starts to turn into the rural area hmm, to pick wild flowers. Hmm? And when he was picking wild flowers, sometimes he would see rustic, in the rustic setting, Krishna in the cowards from a distance. And, and see them, he developed this desire to be amongst them. Hmm? When Krishna now meeting him in Mathura, he, he, uh, he, 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 just his name, Sudama. His name is Sudama. You should be a Sudama. He made him a follower of Sudama, Gopa, in Braj. And before everyone's eyes, turned him into a Gopa. Blessed him with a Gopa Swarup. So beautiful. So that's the Sudama who came to Krishna's mind, the Gopa, when he met the florist, and it caused, it just caused him to give an extraordinary creeper, creepa city, blessed him this way, under that, under that influence. That original Sudama is Sundarananda, and he has Sakura's lineage. Um, so it's still current to this day. I had the fortune to talk personally over Skype from Madhavan, <laughs> from another village, with uh, the Mahant there. And I was asking him different things um, about some of the literature. I was looking for a particular text, uh, which later I found, Gopal Balaban Nataka, a Sanskrit drama written by Dwarkanath Thakur, who's in that lineage also. Um, it's a uh, Sanskrit drama about Gopastami, the day that Krishna becomes not a calf herder, but a cow herder which is the subject in the 15th chapter of the 10th canto, still yet, yet to come in our, our narrative. Um, so, um, when I was speaking with him, um, I spoke to some extent about Nainan and the Taku, who you may know of a book called Preo Bhakti Rasarnava, hmm, that was discovered by one of my godbrothers some years ago and, and translated. And he told me a story about Nainananda Thakur. And the story was that Nainananda Thakur used to travel and hold discourse about Sakyarasa. But he would only speak about Krishna's coward leelas with his coward friends in the daytime. Because at night, in his meditation, and as we know, the cowards would go to sleep. So he, he at night said, uh, we don't talk about it. Those, ha those leaves aren't happening and the cowards are asleep. So this is how he was moving from his sadhaka daya into his siddha and so forth. So on one occasion he came into the assembly of the king of that area and he had some renown, hmm? so a reputation was following him and so the king wanted to hear a recital of the Sakyaras Vilas of Bhagavatam from him that evening. And if the king wants you to do that, you don't really have much choice in the matter. <laughs> I think he wanted him to follow, if the following night, oh, he's come, he should speak in the assembly on Sakyamas. So he was in a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. The king was ordering him to speak on Sakyarasa, but his rustic sensibility, developing rustic sensibilities, would not allow him to. What a predicament to be in. Mm -hmm. So he, I guess he was prepared to lose his head <laughs> over his heart. <laughs> Let his head go out the window and follow his art. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the night, 
when he slept, Nanda Thakur, Krishna came to him in a dream and he said, it's not like that. Let me help you refine your meditation and the development of your ongoing development of your sarup. That at night, the coward boys are fully absorbed in, in the coward leelas by dreaming about them over and over again. So it's all right to talk about them because they are preoccupied with them. And even in their dreams, they may say something. Sometimes in your dream, you may speak out. Like Krishna was known to speak out in his dreams in Dwarka, in the embrace of the queens. Lalita, Vishaka, Subal, Saka. They look at him like, he's not really here. How much closer can you get to him? I'm in the royal bedroom with him and he's somewhere else. And that place is Braj. <laughs> this is the full face of Krishna. Right? They knew it. They had to kind of protect him from influences of, of, of Braj Bhav because it would tip the scales and he could become, become inoperative in, in the Dwar Kaliva. This is brought up beautifully, of course, in Priya Bhagavatamrita. So, the Thakur, anyway, then he was had the license to speak at night, he thought, from Krishna. Um, so Krishna saved the day for him. And in that, in the context, of, see his, his eagerness and his, his commitment. He was ready to lose his head to follow his heart. And Krishna said, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. And maybe I have some things for you to do. You use your head, write a book. Prayubhakti hmm? Vasanamaya. That book came after this incident. <laughs> he doesn't tell the story in there, but he does speak about the coward boys dreaming about Krishna all night. He may have been writing the book at the time, and this part was then fulfilled by the dream. Hmm? Not, a, not, a, not an ordinary dream. And the cowherd's dreams are not ordinary. Therefore I say here, you might have heard, caught it, that in Braj, there is waking consciousness, jagrat, jagra. There is swapna, dreaming consciousness. You know, in the, in the Upanishads we learn there are four dimensions of consciousness. Waking, dreaming, deep sleep, dreamless sleep, susupti, and what is the fourth one called? Real. Yeah, what's the English though? Fourth. It's called the fourth. It means we don't have a word for it. <laughs> it's beyond waking consciousness, dreaming consciousness, dreamless sleep consciousness. It's the fourth. Turiya. <laughs> but here, the point is what? They are not experiencing waking consciousness, the dimension of waking consciousness like we are, now in waking consciousness, neither in the Leela are they experiencing dream, the dream dimension of consciousness, like we may do it at night, dreaming, certainly not the dreamless sleep, and neither the fourth. Hmm? Gopal Tapani, and this is the definitive statement on, the, on Turiyatita, Turiyatita Gopala. Look it up. Turiyat, Google it. <laughs> Turiyatita means the fifth. Hmm? Gopa, Turiyatita Gopala. Look and see what the other lineages try to figure out what Turiyatita means. Look at the Advaitans. What is, what, because the fourth, this is, you know, the fifth? Yeah. You know, they have a very impoverished way of trying to explain the fifth. That doesn't make it the fifth. In, in other words, more. Hmm? Actually, in terms of the Atma, hmm, and understanding its position, and thereby through understanding coming closer to it, it's thought that the waking state is most distanced from it, the dreaming state brings us closer to it, the deep sleep gives us up even closer to it, and in the fourth, we experience the Atman and, 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 and Brahman. Hmm? Fourth. 
So the fifth should be a more enriched state. So the, the, the I forget how it's very impoverished. That's the fifth. It sounds like the third and a half, three and a half instead of let me take it down to the to Vyavaharic or the, the Paramarthic level and so forth. But Gopal Tapani, this is the, the definitive statement. Turiyati then explains it, Gopala. The fifth dimension, that is the Leela of Gopal, that is the subject of the Gopal mantra. Hmm? That is the, that is the uh, this 18 syllable mantra, that is the principal mantra of our Sampradaya, takes you there hmm? into the fifth dimension of consciousness, where there is dreaming and waking inside of the fifth dimension. It's not the ordinary dreaming state, not the ordinary waking state. It's inside of the fifth. Because you don't really, and particularly, you don't really have the dreaming in Baikuntha. You don't have sleeping there. Not in the same way. Anyway, so fifth dimension. They're dreaming about Krishna. It's an interesting point. Uh, not, not, the, not fifth dimension is a dreaming, but I mean the fifth dimension is the Krishna Leela, and it's the context of that. There's waking life, there's dreaming life, but it's not like our waking and dreaming life. It's happening in a dimension of their own that is material. It's happening in a dimension beyond the fourth, the fifth. Hmm? But this is an interesting point to consider in general. Hmm? Because we think that the waking dimension of consciousness is the most complete dimension of consciousness. But there's no reason, no conclusive reasoning to make that case. Between dreaming, between waking consciousness, dreaming, the dreaming dimension, or deep sleep. Why? How can we definitively say that the waking state is the most developed dimension of consciousness? Hmm? Why is the dreaming state not more developed? It's arbitrary. In fact, we can give an argument to the contrary, that in the waking state, we're attuned to the physical world, hmm? and we're experiencing all the limitations of it. Hmm? We're interacting with the physical world, which is quantitative, and we're limited in terms of, thereby, in terms of qualitative existence. In fact, where does the, where does the quality of the waking state come from? Which is more important, by the way, quantity or quality? Oh, okay. So, the physical world, the physical dimension, is all about quantity, right? Velocity, depth, weight, and so forth. These quantitative measurements. Hmm? Where does the qualitative experience of the physical world come from? It comes from the mind, right? Which is active in the dreaming dimension of consciousness when the physical body, for all intents and purposes, turned, is turned off, right? It's resting. And when it is awake, the only thing make, that makes it worth being awake is the mind being on. Everything, every experience is taking place only in the mind. There is no pain in the body. There is no pain in the brain. It's all in the mind. The experience in me is in the, in the mind. That's where it's being experienced. The quality of pain, for example. The quality of happiness. The quality of red, blue. Outside of its, the, 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 the you might say the physical makeup of blue. The experience of blue just makes the physical makeup of it just not worth talking about anymore. Hmm? If you want to say, I know what blue is. 
So let's say you want to know, I, you want to know what an apple is? Yes, I know what an apple is. It's got this many acid and this chromosome, whatever, I don't know. It's got all these, and you name all the physical properties of the apple, just r rattle them off. Another guy says, I didn't know anything about that. Hmm? Have you ever tasted an apple? No. <laughs> and you know nothing about an apple, sir. You know nothing. You have not experienced an apple. Hmm? The and, and the experience, the, the, the taste, the, it, it's not really, the tongue is not tasting. The mind is tasting. Hmm? You understand? So what, and, and so the quality is more important than the quantity. So we can argue that the quality, value, meaning, hmm, is all coming from the mind, which is then active in the dreaming state. You can make an argument that the dream state is, is, a, is a more full state of consciousness than the waking state. You go to the deep, deep sleep, hmm, and then we go, arguably for a moment, beyond the mind. The mind turns off as well. Hmm. And then we experience shanti, peace, a relief that, that to be freed from the mind, be freed, we, 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 we come to come something close to what the self must be like. Hmm? Not, not uh, enslaved, by the demands of the mind and the senses. Free, free. We try to get free through the mind by making the physical world bigger than what it is, by writing a story in which everybody lives happily ever after, which just doesn't happen. Through the mind, we try to make the physical world bigger, but the mind is not capable of making it big enough to, to accommodate the the, the, the breadth, the length, the depth, the, the, the quality of the freedom of life that the soul has inherently and is yearning for through the vehicle of the mind, hmm, by tweaking the body and so forth. So when the mind turns off in deep sleep, then the Vedantins say, after waking, one says, I slept very well. I had an experience independent of the mind the mind was turned off, and I experienced. How can you describe your experience? It was restful, shanti, shanti, shanti. It was peaceful. I didn't have to work. I was free. I didn't have to get up and work. Hmm? I was free just to lie in bed. <laughs> Their argument is, but well, you can't remember something that you didn't experience, so you must be remembering something that was happening. Hmm? A contentless experience. It had no material content, whether it be psychic or physical material content, mental or physical content. It was devoid of that. It was a contentless... Here, here you have the content to experience and then you have the experiencer, right? Hmm? You have the objective world, and then you have the subjective world. Even the mental world is part of the objective world, ultimately. Hmm? The super subject in this scenario is the self. Hmm? So free from the mind, free from the, kind of momentarily, from the, from the physical demands, oh, it felt good. It was peaceful. I was free. Hmm? Something like that. They studied the human experience like this, and they thought this is indicative of the fact that the, that the self exists beyond mind, beyond body, and then they, they, they developed a system through their introspection and subsequent revelation. That's called we call it sadhana. We call it yoga. A system of demonstrating to oneself on a permanent basis, this uh, theory that there's a self that's independent of the mind, independent of the body. Mm. That's what yoga is about, to experience that. It's, what, a, what a challenge. Mm. Mm. And, and that means to, to, to do that by following this hint, 
that nature kind of speaks to us about, if you're plugged in and listening, hint of a life beyond mind and body. And yoga means for going there, to Turiya, the fourth, beyond thought, beyond word. Hmm? Trying to go there by word, what comes back. The mind come, returns in its attempt to go there. The self can go hmm? by faith, derived from input from that world. Hmm? One can go to the fourth. So, now, that said, the yogin, the, the mystic, right? And in different traditions, cross-culturally, hmm? has and have experience of the fourth dimension in this body, without the death of the body, I and mean, that's what the yoga is about, right? You, you, as I said, you want to be very objective and separate yourself from the mind and the body, experientially. Hmm? And when they do that, they become, tap, they tap into the self. It's, it's, it's ananda. It's, it's, uh, it's satchit ananda. It's anu. It's atomic particle of satchit. Experience that. Atmananda. Hmm? Atmaram. The joy of the self. And then they don't have to move according to the demands of the mind because when you when you feel experiencing the joy of the self hmm, the mind is suspended the physical body is suspended it, it can't have play because the movement of the body and the mind are for the pursuit of pleasure but the pleasure is so intense that the body and mind are arrested in their attempt to go outward and of course they've been trained to turn inward, hmm? and turning inward, that they, they, they found a joy that exceeds everything outside. If you could put it all together in one big syringe and inject yourself with it, it wouldn't compare to Atman, Atmananda, which is an impoverished sense of bliss. Hmm? It's the beginning of the uh, uh, entry level into the fourth dimension. And our ideal is this fifth dimension. We'll go back to that. But my point is this. From the waking state, which is thought to be, in human society, for the most part, to be the most developed, they don't quite, quite talk about it in these terms, but that, that is the full consciousness when you're awake. When you're asleep, you're not fully conscious, they think. When in deep sleep, then you don't even exist. This is their idea. And the fourth, which is this experience of mystics, is some type of um, diseased condition. Schizophrenic or something. It's just something weird. Some un unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Hypermetabolic state, they would call it. It's, it's, uh, a dysfunction. That's what they think. And in the waking state, there you can be a fully functional being. Hmm? Now what happens in the waking state? In the waking state, people are identified with a particular body, with a particular nation, with a particular gender, and they're all, to one extent or another, fighting with one another. Hmm? Let's look at the waking state for what it really is. Jivo jivasya jivanam. One living being is food for another. And this is the most developed dimension of consciousness. You can't, you, 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 uh, uh, it's a, a plane of struggle. Struggle, fighting, uh, discord, um, um, and, and dissatisfaction. Hmm? Can't get no. <laughs> he, said he was right about that. Tried and he tried and he tried. <laughs> a long time back, but it still holds true. That's why it was such a popular song at the time. Because <laughs> it's eternal. It's an eternal message for the material world. 
<laughs> so, this is the most enriched state of consciousness. Now, now we look at the mystic. Now, let's talk to him. You may think from your waking state, preoccupied with it, thinking it is the fullest dimension of consciousness, and then think this other stage of these mystics, uh, uh, it, it, whether they be devotee mystics, Vaishnavas like ourselves, or yogis, what may be the case, Sufis, that they're weird and impoverished and, or, or uh, dysfunctional on some level. And what, what is their experience? Their experience is there's no national boundaries. They, they just ended the whole political discourse about our nation state and how to make it best and, and it is the best and preserve it and if we have to we'll fight with another nation state and so on and so forth. All these boundaries just disappear, they melt away. Hmm? I mean, that's what the whole of Paul Pollock is, is about is to preserve the state, the nation state. Hmm? And somehow in relation to other nation states keep our difference but Make some, find some common ground, and make peace. Humans want to go beyond that in the waking state. They actually want what the mystics experience. They want the human beings, they, 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 their own natural sensibility, if they're not taught artificially otherwise, doesn't restrict them, for example, marrying interracially or for a an Italian to marry a, 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 a Swede or something like that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but but we, we sometimes we are taught otherwise in, in, in the waking state. But the, the, this is just an example of how the, the, what in the in the fourth dimension all these things disappear. Genders disappear. Wow, <laughs> that's a huge issue. It just appears, and everything and, and on. It is, it is a, a, a underlying, overarching unity. Therein, the mystic is loving his neighbor like himself. Really, as the Gita says, the highest yogi is one who sees the suffering of others as if it's his own. He feels it like that because it's a, he's now identified with the ground of being. that we're, we're all constituted of. It's such, a, you just read what the mystic coming out of the fourth dimension just for the, momentarily to write about it, to speak about it. How attractive, how beautiful, how rich. Hmm? We can make a good case. This is the most enriched state of consciousness and the waking state is the most impoverished dimension of consciousness, where you get all these mixed up ideas and even start to think that the self doesn't even exist, memory is just a part of the brain and, uh, and it's all just flatland and so forth. Mm -hmm. No wonder it's not working. <laughs> trying to get a theory of everything by excluding almost everything <laughs> that matters. Feelings. Mm -hmm. Turn, just reduce it all down to just feelingless matter. Hmm? Might as well go to sleep, hmm? right? Live in the mind. Hmm? If you keep telling, I'm telling my mind is the brain, it's gonna just go to sleep. <laughs> Turn off the brain, I had enough. I'm tired of being told by you that I am reducible to you. Hmm? I'm the experiencer, qualitatively, comparatively. Hmm? Because, why? Wow, because I am touched by the proximity of the Atma. And I've reflected. What, what makes the subtle body capable, this is a form of matter, capable of having qualitative experiences and a sense of I. Atoms, the particles, does the floor have a sense of I? We don't think so. Does the brick on the wall have a sense of I? Why should the brain have one? Hmm? It's just made of the same stuff, right? right? 
but there's a but but there's a form of matter in which that sense of I develops. It's material. It's called the mind. But it's a form of matter that can reflect the power to reflect the light of consciousness. And therefore, a reflected sense of I, we call ankar, appears there. It's an impoverished sense of I, but and it, but it's experiencing, relatively speaking, qualitative experiences, which is that which is inherent in the Atma. It has the capacity to have qualitative experience, bhoktritva, gnakritva, hmm? what is it, uh, kartritva. It can be a, a knower, it can be an agent of action, it can experience, uh, it can have qualitative experiences, happy, sad, good, bad. Hmm? It can have these things, this subtle matter, because, as I say, it's subtle and refined, and therefore, in proximity to the to consciousness itself, Atma, it can reflect the, the light of consciousness. It can reflect what consciousness is, which means what? Forget this Advaita Vedanta stuff. Our whole emotional life, materially speaking, is why is it possible? Because we're reflecting consciousness. There must be an emotional life in potential for consciousness, for the Atma. Hmm? Advaita Vedanta wants to end all the emotional life. Gaudi Vedanta says, forget this fourth dimension. We go to the fifth dimension. <laughs> that is Bhakti Rasa. Hmm? So, is it. It's our argument. Forget about the argument. But wait a minute. There is only matter. This is how can a, how can a, how can a, how can a conscious so-called immaterial thing have any causal efficacy or move a material thing? This has been an argument in the Western civilization since the time of Descartes. Hmm? How can an immaterial thing, which he thought to be the mind, move a material thing? How do material things move? One material, one physical thing pushes another physical thing. Of course, it was curious then when Newton thought, said, actually there's a force that moves things without physical contact. When Newton started to talk about this, which is the gravitational principle, his contemporaries thought Newton's becoming a new ager. <laughs> <laughs> He's becoming a, 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 a cultist. Such a sober man, how did it happen to him? But then somehow, I'm not sure how, he was able to make the case for this a material force. What's happened? You have to understand what happened in there. Suddenly, matter expanded. They couldn't deny gravitational force, although you can't like see it. I don't know how they did it, but, but they just expanded the model of matter. Okay. And then let's not talk about it too much. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Mm -hmm. How could it, because uh, it would appear like an immaterial thing was moving a material. They just made it material. Gravity. It's material. <laughs> That's a material force. Mm -hmm. So, Still, the question remains, how can something immaterial then move or influence, have an influence and impact on that which is material? The whole question is ridiculous because it assumes that an immaterial substance has to act like a, like a, like a material substance. The whole point is it's an immaterial. It has different abilities and powers. You're insisting that it act like a material influence in order to have existence. And the whole point is it's immaterial. Hmm? Just by its proximity. Sometimes the Vedanta gives this example, analogy, which is, are never complete, but they help us. Like a magnet, like magnetic force, it can move the iron filaments without touching it. Hmm? It has power. So the Atma has the power to project itself 
as we see ourselves doing every day, projecting ourselves into material things and calling them ours. The I goes into the other things in the, in, through the words, my. It's mine. And I like it. And I'm concerned about it because I am in it. Because it's mine. So if something happens to it, I feel like something's happening to me. If it's my car, it's a problem. Right? Darn, say it to me. <laughs> but if it's somebody else's car, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's not such a big deal. Of course, we all identify with Diamond Sage as his car breaks down. We think, oh, goodness, we sell it. Mm -hmm. It's going to come on time. Mm -hmm. So, the point is that we are projecting ourselves all the time into material things. That's what the word my means. The I is projecting itself into material things, identifying with them, and then whatever happens to them is happening to me. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, so it's thought. So the point is that we have experience, in this sense, of the self being able to project itself. So the self is being projected by Vishnu into matter, Without ever touching it, influences that subtle matter. And from subtle matter, then, psychic matter comes the physical matter. Hmm? Right? So, at any rate, the Atma lives beyond the three dimensions. And it can go to the fourth dimension. And if it's very fortunate to get a sadhusanga of Vaishnava, it can go to the fifth dimension. And the fifth of the fifth dimension, I mean, we really, this is really our thing. Pro, uh, what is it? Panchama Purushartha. This is the Gaudi saying. Panchama Purusha. There's four goals of life. What are they? Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. And every Sampradaya, including all the Vaishnav Sampradayas, will tell you that. Hmm? We say, no, there's five. Hmm? Panchama Purushartha. That's Duryatita, and it's the realm of Gopal. And there, the cowherds in the fifth dimension are dreaming about Krishna, cowherding all night long. And Balaram Swarm wakes them, they wake to their dreams coming true. Hmm? And off they go. Right? To the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj, and then Krishna is awoken, awakened, and uh, on this particular day, of course, as I said, the night before a picnic lunch was planned. This is a big thing. Hmm? Because, as we'll see later on, we won't get there, I don't think, in, in our discourse here today, but when you get to this point, it's a huge central, central point of the center of the Sakiras, the center of the Bhagavatam, the picnic lunch. This, this is, this is Prabhupada had that depicted you know, in, in art. Hmm? Every coward boy sitting next to Krishna, each one's thinking Krishna's sitting right next to me. Just like each gopi and Rasali is thinking Krishna's dancing with me alone. Hmm? And in this setting, these coward boys are free to eat without, as I said the other night, without Nanda Maharaj making them behave. Hmm? And so they can, as soon as one tastes, each one has a different taste, as I said, so I'm repeating, it's worth it. He thinks, this, one, this is taste the best. Actually, all of it is the best. It's all prepared by Radha, overseen by, by what's... But, but it's, it's prepared in Madhurya Rasa, overseen by Vatsalya Rasa, for Sakya Rasa. <laughs> <laughs> it's all being done for Sakya Rasa. <laughs> this, is the, this is the perspective, right? The subjective perspective. So, woo, that's a great thing. Every, every morsel is absolutely out of this world, right? But each coward has his own taste. Each one is an individual. Hmm? Each one is an individual unit of Sakya Rasa. Hmm? You see, this Rup Shakti, its nature is that it's constantly moving to please Krishna, like a shadow moving with him. So it's always creating opportunities for his pleasure, anticipating his desires. He's such a son called whatever he desires happens. And the Srupa Shakti facilitates that. I was saying this the other day, the Srupa Shakti facilitates the will 
of Krishna. Maya Shakti cannot get in the way of the will of Krishna because Krishna is always within the orbit of his Swarup Shakti. Hmm? Maya Shakti obscures our will. We have to fight with Maya Shakti to realize our will. And we may not be successful, and ultimately we won't. Because we have a will to live. Hmm? And in terms of our sense of who we are, identifying as we do with the biological and psychological sense of self, that's an impossible possibility. Hmm? That will will be thwarted. The Sarup Shakti facilitates the will of the Jiva. Hmm? So each cowherd, for example, each gopi, each has, they're a complete, so to speak, person. I, I sometimes say they're like incomplete people. We're incomplete people. Hmm? I answered the question once before, it's worth repeating, once about, they asked me at Brinda Kunj, actually, they asked me in secret, after I'd given a lecture, I don't know what it's about, but he said, Marshall, I want to ask you a question. Is there any real sex life in Goloka? And I mean, real sex life. I didn't want to ask it in, the, in public. I told him, no, you don't understand. There is no real sex life in the material world. There, is no, there are no real people here. There are just appearances of people. Hmm? Appearances, and they disappear. They appear, disappear. Where did he go? I guess he's not here. History forgets about him. Whatever you may do, in time, history will forget about you, unless what you've done hmm, is gone to the other side. Thought deeply about it. The influence of the Buddha, the Jesus, the Rumi, Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya. This will never, ever, ever disappear from the world. It just cannot, it can never go away. Hmm? It's thousands and thousands of years now. Hmm? There's two things that will be remembered in this world. However spiritual you are, however unspiritual you are. <laughs> It's all about God, in other words. God is what's remembered in the world. Hitler will be remembered for how ungodly he was. And the devotee, the mystic, will be remembered for how, how centered on God he was. This is what will make the lasting, leave the lasting impressions in the world. So what was the point? So each cowherd hmm, has his own personality. He's a complete person, constant of sakya rasa. You might think, if the rasa, if the bhava is nitya-siddha, nitya-siddha krishna prem sattva gunai, shabhanadi sutta chitte kora yudai. If the bhava, the prem, is eternally perfect, then how can you go from here to there and suddenly you get a spiritual body wasn't wasn't there before? Hmm. How can it be eternal and have a beginning? Because it's manifesting beyond time, <laughs> outside of time. Hmm. And what's happening is Nothing, nothing new is happening. It's the nature of that realm. The Sarup Shakti is constantly re, constantly manifesting herself in different ways for the pleasure of Krishna. That's nothing new. That's what happens there. Hmm? Forever. So, a Gopa Sarup will manifest. And it's, what's manifesting? It's just another shape of that which is eternal. Sakirati. Madhuri for example. That is eternal. It's, it's appearing in paradigmatic figures like Subal, Tridham, Stoka Krishna, Ujwala, Deva Prasta, all these friends of Krishna. In Madhuri Rasa, Valita, Vishaka, Rupa Manjari, so forth. But that's not the only shape it will take. So the Bhava is eternal, and it takes a shape. Because if you get the bhava, if you get love, praying, then 
it has to have a shape to express itself. But love has a form, has a shape. The form doesn't limit as much as it facilitates. The, the canvas of the artist, what would be his art without that? It would be abstract in his head, it couldn't be expressed. He needs the canvas to share it. So there's a shape. And a full spiritual person. And each one has own individual desires. It's not like a desireless place. These gopas have different desires. They see some like jackfruits, some like mangoes, some like both. Hmm? So some think this is the best preparation. Even each, though each preparation is absolutely the best. How could it not be? It's cooked by Radha. Hmm? Again, it's coming from Vatsalya, Madhuri Rasa. It's saturated with this. And made for sake. <laughs> so, so the tasting, but one thinks this is, this is the best. And immediately takes it out of his mouth and puts it in Krishna's mouth. You cannot do that around the dinner table with Nanda Maharaj sitting there. No, you can do it. Such freedom, this picnic. That's why they couldn't sleep at night, right? You want to have a picnic. You want to go. This eating is a big thing, you know. And Krishna Viva. It is everywhere, right? <laughs> if it weren't for so many distractions, so many opportunities, which is thought to facilitate happiness, we could be content with eating and sex, basically. <laughs> You see, these things are emphasized in the scriptures because in those days people didn't have computer games and this and that and everything else. Opportunities to do different things. So happiness was eating and sex. Hmm? For the most part. Hmm. Now, nowadays, you eat some junk quickly hmm? so that you can do something else. Because there's so many things to do. <laughs> there's just so many things to do. You've got to keep up with it. Newer new things to try. None of which satisfy us. Anyway, there are good, good food too. <laughs> we advocate that. But that, if you start to look at good food, you start to go in a whole different direction. You, know, you slow down. You think of how it's grown. You get to know what is soil. Hmm? what it does to your body, hmm? and so forth. Then you start to think differently, isn't it? Hmm? You start to move away from industrialization and the ugliness of that. Hmm? Where are we going? We're going back hmm? to a time of less, lesser opportunities when we can find more because we're not living in just a state of constant distraction. Hmm? We can't pay attention to the moment we're in. If you could pay attention to the moment you're in, you could find everything in a moment, everything in an atom. Krishna's in every atom. So each cowherd has his own taste. If we what each one thinks this is best, takes it out, puts it in Krishna's mouth. Again, if he tastes something else, he this is second best, then he gives that to his friends. Third best. He keeps that for himself. Hmm? Very beautiful. But this picnic lunch, so this is a big thing. This is what Brahma then. He saw this, 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 the Sarupya Muti blessing given to Agasura, the flash of the, of the form entering into, into Krishna. I can't go into it, obviously. Brahma was, was different than the Davis. He had some sanskar for, for Sakyamans. Well, read it, read it, as I said the other day, I think, from the dawn of creation. But when they all sit down there and take the lunch, then he's really confused. I thought that maybe that was my guru, but he's acting in such a way that it's, I see him with the gyan mudra giving mantra. And now I see him eating, eating with his left hand and putting food in other people's mouth and taking it out. And then, it's an, must be an imposter imitating my guru. I better check it out. Let me test his powers and see. This is his 
Krishna thought it was innocent on his part. He's just a sadhaka. He doesn't know. He wants sakirasa, but he doesn't know what it is yet. Hmm? Uh, anyways, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. But, but, uh, the same way a little bit about something, life in the day of, uh, of, of cowardice depicted in the uh, Bhagavatam, taking us to the fifth dimension. Question? Uh, I have a question about Priyamar Masakras mm. and those intimate uh, associates of the Lord Krishna who are participating in Madhurya Madhurya. Mm. So this Madhurya Lila takes place usually in the night. So my question is, if they also sleep in the night or they are, they are, they are up? I have a question about the Priyana Masakra, the popular Bliski Towarzysz of Pana Krishna, who are participating in his work in Madhurya, which are usually in the night. My question is, do they Również śpią, czy, czy nie? This is a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's very secret, so that very, very, very few people know about it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, Raghunath Das Kosami has penned one verse, hmm? very beautifully depicts. Krishna leaving in the night along with Subal mm -hmm. and appreciating the forests in the night and that Subal is feeling the anticipation of Krishna to meet with Radha and it's, there, it's dark in the forest and so Krishna, Subal tells Krishna, you wait here. And he finds his way, mm -hmm. and he meets Radha mm -hmm. and her handmaiden, and then they follow, uh, put their hand on Subal's shoulder like this, Radha, and on Jari on Radha's shoulder, and he takes them to Krishna. Mm -hmm. So he, he, this is one and only one <laughs> verse about such a possibility. Mm -hmm. So in your deep bhajan, in your next life or so, <laughs> then you can explore this possibility. <laughs> that said, of course, uh, Rupa Goswami has written a verse in Ujjval Nilmani, and he's written that verse in the bhav of, 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 of Rupa Manjari. He's, he's, in that bhav, in writing that verse. And in that verse he says, Oh, how lucky is Sumbal. Hmm? Is there any service that he does not have an opportunity to participate in? When Krishna is lying in the embrace of his lover, if she should get up in a puff, and leave him entwined together. And there's a rather, rather poetic and intimate description of there in which hyperbole is used hmm, to describe the intimacy of Radha and Krishna. When she gets up and leaves, he goes and brings her back. And while they're entwined together, he fans them. Hmm? What savior can he not participate in? And the hyperbole in the verses is, is the way in which Radha and Krishna entwined is, is described. So the point being is, is, that, is that is to emphasize that much more hmm, how, um, what access he has to the intimacy of, of Radha and Krishna Lila, which is of course this, what the whole of the Braj is moving around, the union of Radha and Krishna. Everybody wants it even if they can't want it, to pretend they don't want it and say it's not possible. And others are 
helping to make it possible. So um, this is a very um, um, exalted form of Sakura, the most exalted form that is full of empathetic love. It's that empathetic love is of the same exact nature, tadbhav, means it's empathetic love that the handmaidens of Radha have. In general, it is a, it, their love is of an empathetic nature. So they empathize with Radha and Krishna's love for one another and experience it. If you, if you empathize, through empathy, by experience, you can empathize and with empathy, empathy you can experience even though you're not directly involved. The, the real uh, success used to be, I don't know now, of the, of the psychologist or the psychiatrist was, was to enter into the, somehow the experience of his patient so that he could adequately empathize, right? So experience of something, if you have the same pain as someone else who experienced it in the past and they have it, you're more able to empathize with it. So this Tadbhav is an empathetic type of love. So the mantra is empathizing with the plight of Radha in separation, for example, or her, her mom, where she's uh, upset with Krishna. They're empathizing with her. And they may empathize with Krishna also. Hmm? And so these Brihanamasagas are similarly, they, in this regard, the Madhuri influence in their Sakya Cause enables them to be empathetic. They get that Maduri influence from the gopis. They have a desire, Vishwanath Chakravarti explains in Bhaktarasamrita Sindhu Bhinu, a desire to taste that love. Why do they have a desire to taste the love of the gopis? They want to know, because they want to have experience enough of it enough to be able to empathize with Krishna, their friend, so that at some point, there's no point in their friendship with him where they cannot be his friend. Hmm? In other words, not all friends can listen to you when you're talking about the problems you're having with your love life. Most of them say, eh, let's, let's go bowling or something, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know. But some, some, some have the, have the empathetic softer, softer nature. These Priyanarmasakas are like like the perfect, like, alpha, what is it? What's the opposite of the alpha? Omega. <laughs> There's the alpha male, you know? Alpha, alpha bit. It's so like a perfect combination. Ladies were to like, got enough feminine sensibilities in them to be able to be empathetic. And sympathize, empathize with you know, women like to express their feelings. They don't really want a solution. Mm -hmm. With the man says, well, we can do it like this. We, we, I'm not looking for a solution. I just want to express my feelings. Is there anybody there to feel them, to share them with? Mm -hmm. And they just, actually I found a verse, maybe with some of my sites, I think it's in Krishna Sundar, but uh, I don't know where he drew it from, I can't remember he says, but, but it's said in such and such tantra that, that if, you're, if you have too much emotional distress, then the way to relieve it is to speak about it to others. What do we call that? We call it venting. Venting, yeah. So the scriptural support for venting. <laughs> in, case you, in case you needed that. So uh, these type of friends, they, 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 they their friendship with Krishna is, it's cable, it's completely, it's not bundled with Vatsalaya or, 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 or Dasya, but it is mixed with Madhurya. They want to have the association of the gopis and their kind of love in the context of their Sakurasa. That's why they have male group leader and a, a Yuteshwari, a female group leader. And so they're in that way, their love is of the same nature. It's tadma. Obviously, they don't. They not have. They're not, not interested in having a direct romantic relationship with Krishna. Neither are the manjaris or other sakis of Radha who also have tadma in lesser uh, forms, priya sakis, um, priya sakis, and so forth. So, 
arguably then this is the full face of the friendship because it extends into being a friend in those circumstances. Mm -hmm. Preventing. Hmm? Preventing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but at the same time, it's different than the Manjari because the Manjari is in Manjari Rasa and the, the Sakya is in Sakya Rasa. So it's going to come out a little bit differently and, uh, um, and exceed in Ladini in slightly different measures. But again, that's. Uh, you can take you can take uh, Raghunath Das's verse very seriously, and uh, with your divine will, under the influence of the Sarup Shakti, you can you can explore that possibility. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The meditation of Madhurya devotees is focused on Radharani. It's all Rajas about Radharani. This is the way to approach Krishna. So, what about Sakya devotees? Uh, Wielbiciele w Madhurya Rasie, oni są skupieni na czczeniu Radharani i to jest taki sposób do zbliżenia się do Radharani. Every devotee in the Braj loves Krishna. And every devotee loves Radha. Hmm? How that equation, or how that works out is different for different devotees. Hmm? So, even in Madhurya Rasa, some may like Krishna more than Radha. Some may like them equally, love them equally. Some may love Radha more than Krishna. I mean, there's no really more here or less, but it's all. <laughs> but that the way it plays out, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the devotees of Atsalya Rasa also, uh, forms of Sakya Rasa, they all love Radha. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the Priyanarma Sakas, uh, like Subal, they are uh, kinkars of Radha also. They are servants of Radha as well. So let me give you an example. Uh, in Brit Bhagavatam, we find Gopu Kumar enters into the Leela as Sarup. His name is Sarup, as a Gopa. He's relating his experience to his student, um, Jana Sharma, who also became of the same Bhava, Gopa. So he's, the Priyanarma Sakas. So he tells him that I came here to meet you on the order of Radha. Radha pulled me aside and said, you're my servant. There's one devotee in Mathura, Sadaka, and I cannot remain separate from him any longer. Please go and bring him here, he's Guru. So he says, so that morning I got the order from Radha and I knew if I follow her order, I cannot go cowarding today with Krishna. But I also knew that if I was to please Radha, it would please Krishna more than if I went cowarding with him. So in the service of Radha, he went. So each of these Priyanarma Sakas, they have a Yuteshwari, it means a Gopi group leader who they're also identified with and they serve. Hmm? So Subal's group leader, for example, is, is Radha herself. And for that matter, Raghunathas is helpful to us. He has also listed 108 names of Radha. Hmm? Maybe she can be glorified. And one of them is, what is it, Subal Nyasta. He says, who, Radha is she who, ad who uh, adorns, adorns, adopts, adopts the form of Subal. Radha is she who adopts the form of Subal. It means 
Radha is present in Sakyarasa in the person of Subhal. Mm -hmm. That's peculiar. Mm -hmm. But with full Sakyarasa sensibilities, mm -hmm. Radha takes the form of Subhal. So she's very prominent in the um, in the service of this of the Priyanarma Sakas, mm -hmm. as are other gopis, just like there are manjaris for different gopis. Of course, we follow Radha, so we like to follow the as Priyanarma Sakas, we like to follow the idealists of uh, of of, uh, of Subhadra. But it can be also Ujjwala. Uh, like he's follower of the Vishaka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is just another form of Radha. Mm -hmm. Or Balita. This is the Yuteshwari of Madhu Mangal. She is Anuradha, another Radha, following Radha. Mm -hmm. So they are, yes, they're very much involved there in Madhuri Rasa. So they, when they, you know, in the 15th chapter of the tenth canto, this laying of Denikasur, this beginning is this description of the of the Gopastami. Mm -hmm. So Krishna is in the forest and he's glorifying Balaram. Mm -hmm. In so many ways he's glorifying Balaram. The hidden purpose for his glorifying Balaram is his, he intends to, to separate from the group mm -hmm. with his Priyanarma Sakas to go for Ranavus at Sevakund, uh, at, at, at Shamkund. And Radha Kund. And so he glorifies Balaram in such a way that, that and he makes an excuse, I have to go for a minute, but everyone's content, the others, to stay with Balaram mm -hmm. for a good part of the day. Mm -hmm. While Krishna and the Priyanarma Sakas, they go and engage in these midday pastimes, which are very, very, they are the exclusive property of Rodiya Sampradaya. Mm -hmm. These midday pastimes are the exclusive property of the Gaudi Sampradaya, not in any other Sampradaya, Rag Sampradaya, mm -hmm. would speak Vaidhi Mark Sampradaya. So mm -hmm. they are very much involved there. So in all the Ranavudas with Radha and Krishna, uh, Chandravali and so forth, they're all involved, bringing messages. Uh, uh, Subal will... It's also said that in the Priyanarma Sakha, that their, their Ladini, their Ananda will exceed the measure of that in the other sakas. So it will go not only to Rag, but Anurag and Mahabhav. And Jiva Goswami in Priti Santapastas, and they also experience Man. Man is the jealous love experienced by Radha. That means they're not experienced, they, the cowards don't experience jealous love. They have no doubts. Hmm? There's no doubting in Sakyarasa of my friendship with Krishna. That's just like, we're friends, or you tattoo one another, you know? It's like, you make a blood, you know, shh, you know like blood brother or something like that. Hmm? That's how they feel. But in Madhurya Rasa, there may be doubts. And after all, Krishna has many lovers, hmm? right? So, the man, if it's the experience in Sakyaras, that is for Priyanarma Sakas, who are, have some, some understanding of it enough ex to, to, to be empathetic in those circumstances. So, Radha may, in fact, it's said that in all of the Braj, if Radha's man, her displeasure, her anger with Krishna, hmm, reaches a point that none of the Sakis, Manjaris, can, can break it, so that there can be pranaya again, union, hmm, then, uh, then Subal has to be called in. Hmm. He is more adept than anyone in Braj in catering to Radha's necessity at the time of her mom. Hmm? So he'll go in and say, you know, something like, Radha, you're so proud. 
<laughs> Krishna is now sitting on the banks of, of your kund. Hmm? And if you don't go to see him, if you don't give up this anger, then he is going to commit suicide. What will happen to Vishoda? Krishna commits suicide. What will happen to Nanda Maharaj? What will happen to everybody in Braj? You don't want that on your shoulders. That's what you will speak with her, make a compelling case. Mm -hmm. and break her mind. Of course, she'll reply back, it's his fault, not my fault. <laughs> but then the thought, mm -hmm. yes, I can understand why you'd be angry at him, but you have to give up your anger, not necessarily to forgive him, but because the consequences will be so, so horrible. Mm -hmm. He will commit suicide. Yeah, he should. I mean, he's that bad. I understand that. He should. But then what will happen to you, Soka? What will happen to none? What will happen to them? So for their sake, you have to give this up. This way he makes an inroad into her heart. And, and what she really wants, of course, is to, is, is to meet with them and push her again. He, 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 in the worst moments, or the, the most difficult case, he is the, the one that can bring about solution. So he has to have some understanding, some experience of that mom. So these, these, these boys are very much involved in the, in the service of Rapid also. Does that help? Yeah. Okay, so I higher, higher talks. Yes. Since I was going to when you were... Um, when you were speaking about the different um, states of um, consciousness, like wakefulness and then dreaming and deep sleep, and you said about that wakefulness is like, seems like the most impoverished, um, and the, the other states that get higher, um, more developed states. But yeah, um, I was thinking how in Bhagavad Gita we read how like sleep is like a characteristic of Tamagun and you know you also read how we should try to minimize sleep and these things so I was thinking it seems could you yeah. fix that contradiction? Yeah it, it is in Tamaguna mm -hmm. and um, um, the kind of explanation is is a way as I said of looking at the, our lives and coming to the conclusion that there's a, there's a self that exists independent of the body and the mind. And that deep sleep is, it is governed by Tamaguna, but it is at the same time in one sense, the, the closest thing to the bliss of Brahman, because ignorance is bliss. <laughs> it's true. It's actually true. It's true. Um, and, and, and so there, there's some, in other words, contentless awareness it's it, what, what, what that's called in the macrocosm. What, the, what the, your deep sleep at night is, is a microcosm of the macrocosm. What is it called in the macrocosm? Is it, it, it's, it's called the same thing. It's called susupti. Hmm? Susupti, deep sleep. Susupti, susupti is the state in which the jivas leave the material world provisionally, so to speak, by entering back into Mahavishnu. Hmm? So they leave the material world because the material world folds up. <laughs> they don't go out of it by sadhana, but it folds up 
it enfolds back into Mahavishnu. And they're just resting there. And the fact that, that they're individuals is, that they're not aware of, and it's just peaceful, and it's... Um, so there is a, a, a similarity to be drawn, as the Tantras say, as, as above, so below. So the micro, macrocosm and the microcosm. There's some, some, some correspondence. Hmm? It's not that we go to sleep and we become, we enter into Susupti, you become Brahman and realize, but that Susupti is very like similar to the Brahman idea. Hmm? Um, it's thought similar hmm? in some ways, but it's the third, not the fourth, so there's, there's a significant difference as well. The difference is that there's, a, there's an, an awareness of, um, and more, but um, but yes, in terms of say making an argument, one dimension is more enriched than the other. Mm -hmm. uh, I really want to look at just the two ends. I really kind of looked at two ends of the spectrum: the waking state, how impoverished it is, which we can make a good case for, and the mystic state how rich it is, which would make a good case for. So, and then the mind, of course, I've made a case for that also, being the, the, the realm of quality and meaning and purpose and so forth. And otherwise, you need some time alone in your life. You need rest. <laughs> you need rest. And if you've been laboring under the dictates of the mind and senses forever, then you could sleep for a long time. That's a suit in Mahavishnu. Long rest. And try again. <laughs> we got them try again. But yeah, I mean, it, it's an analogy. It breaks down to some extent. You can't make too much of a case. We can make the case for people that, that a, 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 not, a contentless experience that is restful is arguably more enriched than a state which, in which I'm being chased all the time by the demands of my mind and senses, and I have no, no time to rest. There are demands. If, there, if suddenly you were relieved from all the demands of your mind and senses, wow, that would be a big relief. So you can, you can make, I mean, it's true that the waking state and the, in the, in the waking state and the dreaming state, you can be perpetuating the situation. Karma. I'm not sure if you can perpetuate karma in deep sleep. <laughs> so, anyway. It's the best I can do in my mind. All right. Shishi Gaudatananda Gita. Haribo. Haribo.